Mateo Lane is a hilarious comedian, which I just re- I just recently found his work and I have just been completely obsessed with it. You know, on his bio, it says he's a New York comedian. But if you do a little digging, he was actually raised in Arlington Heights. So we're going to claim him as Chicagoland uh, comedian right here. He was supposed to be in town this weekend for with Fortune Feimster. That's not going to happen. We have a show March 25th of next year, which you can go ahead and get, still get tickets for at the Park West. Mateo, how are you doing today? Good. You actually should get tickets quick because it's almost like three quarters sold out my show in March. It's like 900 seats. Hurry up, go. <laughs> and it'll be a perfect gift for the holidays. You know, get him, get him before Christmas. Yes. I was supposed to go Indiana, Louisville, and then Chicago. And then I got a, a hotel for myself, downtown Chicago, because I have 34 first cousins. So I wanted two days to rest before I went and saw everybody. And then everyone I know has COVID and I've been exposed. And then I was sick earlier this week. So I had to wait in a three hour line yesterday to get a PCR test, to find out a same day PCR test, to find out if I had COVID. Turns out I do not have COVID, but I called Fortune and I was like, I don't think it's before I knew the results. I'm like, this just wouldn't be, I don't, I'm not going to go and put you at risk. And she was like, oh my God, it's the, these are the times we're in. I understand. Don't you worry. We'll figure something out. I'll miss you, but we'll do other dates in the future. Cause we had a whole thing. We were going to bring a piano on, on stage. And then I was going to sing Christmas songs with her for like a 20, 30 minute segment. Oh my God. Well, maybe we could do something virtually or maybe we could do it for for next holiday season. That that would be amazing. Maybe. I know. It's like this holiday, I usually have a Christmas show. I couldn't do that either. I'm like, this fucking holiday does not want me to celebrate. They do not want me to celebrate Christmas. I'm like, I I kind of get it. (laughs) I feel like it's Mariah, like making bets with God. She's like, look, I'll give you some money, God, with my McDonald's money. If you make sure none of these other queens try and take Christmas away from me. So she's really sort of dominated the Christmas market, Mariah, through fear. And, you know, I'll throw you an Egg McMuffin and maybe the, the collectible T-shirt and the hat, too, as well, too. You know, just uh, make sure that you know, It's so crazy she's doing a McDonald's. Like, Mariah, what are you doing? I guess, it goes to, I guess it's a good thing. It goes to a good, it goes to charity. So that's smart that she did that. That, that's a good thing. Uh, but I do want to talk a little bit about your shows here. You know, you were just at the uh, Chicago Theater. You know, you were uh, you're coming to the Park West. What's it like to be able to be, you know, from the Chicagoland area coming to play these iconic venues that I'm sure you went to growing up here? Um, yeah, you know, it doesn't really hit you until you're there. Like I, you know, I'm so busy that I, every single I've been in 16 cities in two months. Like I'm constantly on the road, constantly on planes. You kind of just show up, you know, and so you don't really get to sit in the moment of where you are until you're on stage. So for me, going to Chicago, I opened for Andrew Schultz and he was like, I want to get my battery so this doesn't die on us. And he was like, do you want to do the Chicago theater with me? And I was like, yeah, of course. But then once you walk on stage and you're on the Chicago theater, you're like, oh, this is so great. Like, that's so weird. Like, I'm in I'm in such an iconic place that Pavarotti's performed it because the walls are signed by all the people who have performed there. So like Frank Sinatra, Pavarotti, like, you know, all these famous people. So, yeah, it is kind of crazy. And then you walk on stage and I'm like, oh, I can talk about the Metro or the how shitty the orange line is or I can talk about you know, Gino Z's is disgusting. And, um, you know, I don't know. It's fun. It's weird to be able to go on stage in front of 5,000 people. And like, we all have a similar experience. Oh, exactly. And I want to talk a little bit about your comedy. So the way that I discovered you was through one of the reels that came through on social media. And you were talking about the gondola in Indianapolis. And oh, have, my God, I'll never forget it. Yes. And I have a cousin who lives down there. So I was like, I got to watch this video. And I automatically called down there and was like, is there a gondola? Why have I never heard about this? And end up having like nine conversations. Your videos get passed around. And then people were like, have you seen that one? You've got to see this one. Is this like in the past, like 20 months, how people are discovering your comedy? And yes, because I would say in May up until then, I was just kind of like putting up naked photos of myself and then like drawings. And that was my Instagram. And I was too afraid to put up my material one because I didn't want to burn it. And two, because you know, you, anything you say now you get canceled, but my agents kind of had a, um, intervention with me. They're like, you need to start posting your material online. So I was like, okay, I will. And I didn't realize how much I enjoy it. People really seem to love it. And it, it, it makes me known for my jokes and it invites all different types of people to come to my page and it helps ticket sales on the road. And I just, in this year, I gained 90,000 followers just from these videos I'm putting up. And I'm like, Oh wow. I'm getting like a really good reaction for something I do every single night. 
So it makes you feel validated in the amount of sacrifice and work that I've been doing for the past 10 years to be like, wow, okay. So, all right. I'm not just like speaking into a black hole. People are enjoying what I'm doing. It's cool. It, it is super cool. I mean, let's talk a little bit about that gondola in Indianapolis. Was that your first time going there? And talk yes, a little so bit about what that experience to see that was like. Well, I was with my friend Sashir Zameda, who was at the time on Saturday Night Live, and she was doing a tour. Now, her and I are best friends, so she was nice enough to ask me to come open for her. This is before I was I had any kind of visibility. And I was like, okay. And so we're she's from Indianapolis. So we were doing the show. We're just kind of walking around downtown and we saw, they have like a canal, like a man-made canal in the river. And I still have pictures of us on it. And she's like, well, I guess we could just go on this. There's a gondola. We can go on this gondola ride. It's like, okay. So it was us two and some, you know, two boring white people. And then this guy like pushing the gondola and he was really trying, you know, talking to us about Italy and trying to sing to us like, oh, so let me And I'm like, I've lived in Italy. I speak Italian, but I'll let him live his fantasy. And that was kind of it. And then I was at the show at the cellar and I was like, kind of, I had just gotten a massage and I came to the show. So I was kind of loopy. I almost felt high. And so it was just crowd working. And I said something about Indianapolis. And this woman's like, I'm from there. Have you been there? I was like, yeah, I went on that gondola ride. And it just kind of went from there. And it kind of, that video kind of went viral. And people got so mad, like, there's not a Sonic in Indianapolis. And I was like, cool, you must be real fun on a first date. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, even when you're talking about it, I was like, going on a fake gondola ride and getting a Sonic, like, I mean, that's the perfect Midwest, you know, right. afternoon right there. <laughs> Yeah, well, look, also there is a Sonic in Indianapolis. Someone did tell me there was, so I feel validated. But yeah, that was just off the cuff chatting. And then it kind of struck me as funny. So I I edited it together so it could be a reel. And it got a lot of attention and it feels great. That, that is amazing. Now, you mentioned uh, earlier, you know, before we started recording the interview that, you know, you said, I got a lot of cousins. I was going to spend a little extra time here in Chicago, you know, since you're not going to be able to make the shows here with Fortune Themester. But what's it like to be able to come back here? Do you get friends from like grade school and high school that, that come to your shows or or try to get tickets? Well, my, or? my family. So my mom is Italian and Mexican. So she's one of seven. She's actually one of 15, but that's a whole other story. But she's one of seven. So I have now, I think, because my cousins are having cousins, I have like 34 cousins and we all grew up on the same block. And it was an incredible childhood. I was raised with all my cousins, my brothers and sisters. However, when I come to Chicago, they will show up to everything, like my big fat Greek wedding. So sometimes I have to sneak into the city to perform if I can't be overwhelmed with 500 family members so I try and I'm like, okay, in March, I'm coming, I'm doing a show in March. You guys can come to that show, you know? Um, but I'm excited. I do get hit up every once in a while. Sometimes I forget people and they reach out to me like, Hey, so cool to see where you've been. And I'm like, I don't remember who you are. I, I didn't really have a great high school experience. I was kind of made fun of a lot and not really, I was just insecure and gay and closeted. And I think people picked up on that. So I was a target. I mean, it wasn't the worst, but there's been a few people who reach out to me that are like, oh my God, like, so I'm so happy for you. And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess, I guess that is kind of cool. I don't know. But I don't really, I don't really harp on that kind of stuff. It never was like, I'll show them. It was like, once I was 18, I moved to the city. I was like, yeah, screw this. I'm going, I'm going to Roscoe's. I lived in the city. So when I was 18, I moved into the city proper. So I've lived in, oh my God, I can't, where are you? But I mean, I've lived in Lakeview, Andersonville, Roscoe Village, like, you know, all the gay neighborhoods and stuff. Then when you hit 21, you get to go to those areas and finally go to bars and shit. Like, what is it? It's called North Halstead now. I think yeah, that's North what Halstead. the neighborhood is called. So, you know, going to North Halstead for the first time, like, then you're, like, introduced to people who aren't from Chicago. And it's like, oh, wow, there's a lot of people here in this city who aren't from here. Like, I remember this one, I remember saying the word crayon. And this guy was like, what? And he's like, it's crayon. And me and my friend Sophia, born and raised in Chicago, like, it's crayon. <laughs> it's like, we have accents? What? You go to the jewels, you wear your gym shoes, you get crayons, you know? that That's the way I, we're talking I had it. I had to change my accent since I've been living in New York. I say soda. I don't say pop. I don't say legs or eggs. I say leg and eggs. I don't say roof. I say roof. I don't say sausage. I say sausage. Like, you know, you change how you say stuff. It's crazy. I didn't think I had that. 
what about when you come back to Chicago and you, do you, does that automatically come back to you or do you still keep Sometimes, it in your heart? Yeah, well, I just, I talk to my mom every day. I mean, I still have an accent. You can hear it, but it's lessened for sure. And now I start saying things like New Yorkers, like I can hear myself sounding New York-y sometimes, but um, it's crazy when I like, when you're sitting with other people in your family, you're like, oh my God, you, you guys really do have such a strong accent. Oh my God. <laughs> Like my mom has such a strong Chicago accent. My uncle Mike has a Southside accent, Irish Southside. It's like, hey, Mateo, you're going to come to here. Like, I'm like, oh my God, you sound like a cartoon. Oh, exactly, exactly. Where you can spend, you know, plenty of a, a fun night over there. Uh, let's talk a little bit. We mentioned about Mariah Carey. She's got this whole McDonald's meal and thing going on right now. I mean, how crazy have you gotten into that? I mean, have your friends, are they talking about this whole Mariah thing with McDonald's? I love Mariah Carey. I've in the past said some disparaging things about her because I thought it was funny material, which I have publicly um, uh, shamed myself and apologized for because I love Mariah Carey. I've seen her like nine times live. And um, I think that she finally gets the joke. I think that she's really ahead of the game. She's way smarter than we take her credit for. She knows what she's doing. She knows she's camp. She knows she's wearing the dresses. She knows that she's taking this deal from me. She's making her money. She's making coin and she's laughing all the way to the bank. I, good for her. Over the pandemic, I was so desperate for work. If someone told me, can you wear a diaper for an ad? I'd be like, when's a good time? So the fact that she's got McDonald's like knocking on her door, fucking go for it, bitch. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, and just like that, have you been watching the uh, the new series? No, I'm not. I don't care. I could care less about what Carrie and Samantha are doing today. I just don't care. <laughs> I don't. I mean, Sex and City was fun, and I don't. I like Sarah Jessica Parker. I, I like, but I don't care about those characters anymore. <laughs> I just don't give a shit. I mean, it, it's been a while, but then a lot of people were afraid to ride the Peloton bike based on you know what happened, and it was just it got crazy last week. Oh yeah, well that's smart. That's smart marketing from uh, HBO. It's like. Yeah, let's just have one of the main characters die in a ridiculous way on a pet. Like he was dying by trying to be healthy. Yeah, you better work, HBO. <laughs> I do want to talk a little bit about your time in Italy. And you were an opera, you know, I hear you singing on some of the videos, but it's not just something that you do. I mean, you were were you a professional? Were you studying over the, in Italy? Were, well, were, I'm a professionally trained singer, but I was painting in Italy. I was an oil painter. I went to the school, the Art Institute of Chicago. I studied oil painting. I also studied in Italy and I worked for maybe seven years as a professional storyboard artist for TV commercials and fashion ads in New York City. Um, and then just started telling dick jokes. But yes, I do sing. And yes, I was before comedy trying to make it as a singer. And I was a part of this cabaret in huge quotations cabaret group that went around to gay strip clubs in Chicago and I would sing in between the drag queen and the stripper but I loved it because I got to pick my own music so like you would see a drag queen and then a stripper like completely naked and then I'm up there singing Streisand like memories like just the most ridiculous we performed at Atmosphere um we performed at Hydrate we performed at and we performed everywhere when you do come into town, do you still go down to North Halstead and, and have cocktails? I mean, is it something that you kind of fit into? I, I miss those days of going North Halstead and running around with my, my gays. But the problem is they got rid of my favorite gay bar, which was Taco Burrito Palace. They replaced the Taco Burrito Palace with some new bullshit building. I'm like, that was the best place to go at four o'clock in the morning. You're wasted. You've just you've left Berlin and you walk in. And I'm, of course, I'm like speaking Spanish, drunk and stuff. But I loved that place. But yeah, I, I was planning on doing it this time, but my schedule got fucked. So now I'm not going to be able to go to North Halstead. I might go Christmas Christmas Day. Me and my brother and cousin, we're all gay. We usually go on Christmas Day to sidetrack just to like see what it's like. I used to go to Scarlet and then it burned down and then it came back. Yeah. We would go to Roscoe's, but it was still kind of like... It was like, if you're, if you young and you want to dance, you go to Roscoe's. If you're old and you just want to stand around, you go to sidetrack. You know, if you want to get murdered, you go to little gyms. Like there was like all these different sort of like rumors about like where to go. Berlin was like, if you want to go fucking wild and just have a fucking weird night, go to Berlin, you know? I, I remember all that. Yeah. yeah, that's when you open up the door. You're like, why is it light outside? Oh, because it's five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Donorama every Saturday. <laughs> that is amazing. Mateo, thank you so much for your time today. March 25th, Park West. Go ahead and get those tickets now. It's almost sold out. You want to get them for the holidays so that you can go ahead and check them out here in the spring.
and go see Fortune and enjoy her this weekend. And uh, she's an amazing comedian. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. Bye. Thank you. Have a good one.